Yo, how's it DIYers? Now, let's put this old PC back together. Never do up your motherboard screws all the way. You put them all in first and then tighten them. Stay till the end for a free Windows 10 upgrade strategy. There's no way you can screw this up, even though technically you do need to screw it up to succeed. So now all the screws are in, we can tighten them properly. A tight screw is a good screw, but too tight isn't always right. Now let's put the cooler back on the CPU. I'm going to use a bit of arctic silver. Now you don't need a whole lot. Divide Just a line conquer. and a couple of dots. Now just let Back that the zigzag. Now I'm not tightening it all the way. Just want the screw to bite. And then the next one. Then the next one. Even pressures. And now we can go down all the way. it hits the bottom. Not tight, just finger tight. That one. That one. That one, now we can go just a little nip. Make sure it's tight. That's done. Let's put our fan. There's a channel on your plug that goes onto the clip on the port. That way you know you got it the right way around. Thank Jeebus we cut those annoying slots off the fan in part one. I'm a big fan of that. Now ram back in. So you see on the motherboard there's these tiny letters that say which port is which. So we want to go into the first port, DIM1, which is this one. You just ram it in there. And there's a slot that goes onto the slot. Done. Power switch. This is USB Type 3. Goes into the blue port. The yellow is audio. No, USB. That's USB 2. Goes onto there. You can see the pinhole goes onto that and it's the right color this one here is audio ports for your microphone and headphones port it goes to the blue one audio it says AUD that way up fight the power Hard drive in, CD drive, ready for Napster. Who the heck is the 20 pin connector? It's just got a little six banger. So, on this one, that goes onto the white plug, and you have a SATA power one as well. One's next to it. I ain't seen that before. Which gives us power for hard drives. These are notched like an L. Don't put them on backwards, you will blow it up. Sometimes the little tab can snap off and then they actually will go on backwards. And it's a heck of a job to repair that. It is doable. Done it once before for a friend. Shout out to the wizard zombie. Get that mighty four pin power connector on there. We've got the SATA cables. They're the same, they've got an L notch. That's it there. Chassis fan. So a fan, the side that holds the motor on, 
the air comes past it. So we want air to be pulling out with this fan. So I'll put the blades facing that way. It's much, much more fancy that way. All right, and then the last power supply plug goes back on there. Put our front panel back. When in doubt, smack it out, mate. And the last screw. But there we have it. All screwed up. Good as new. Okay, so I've managed to get this all plugged in. I even found it a screen for free off Facebook. I found an old keyboard in the bin. This was back in the day though, I found this and I've been using it for years. All that was wrong with it was dirty, so I just washed it with a sponge and some soap. Comes up mint, still works great. Borrowed a mouse off the missus, a cool little gaming mouse. So let's try and post this thing, see if it and doesn't get banned. Or is that just my Facebook? Oh, making noise. Making light. Oh yeah, starting windows. So the hard drive is good. That is awesome. Windows 7, oh, it's too old. I was wondering if it still had Windows 7 on it. Oh, and it's in French. And I have no idea what the password is. A stick drive, at least eight gigabytes or bigger. You can borrow one, you only need it for the install. Search for Windows 10 Installation Media. Go into the Microsoft website. Don't trust anyone else, just use the Microsoft version. Click on Windows 10, and then you want to download the tool now. Click on that, put in your stick drive. Accept, read, read it i've read it before what you want to do is create an installation media usb flash drive so yes do that and click next and you want to do usb flash drive see it says it needs to be at least eight gigabytes so yes and see it can see the drive so now you're good you just select next and it will install okay now that your drive's made Chuck it into a USB port. Oh, and look, it's automatically found our Windows 10 installation media, which means that it was enabled in the BIOS. So that's cool. We'll let that boot up. What happens is when the key isn't found and it's not trying to boot to Windows 10 installation media, you need to make your boot order to be booting from the USB drive before the hard drive and sometimes you need to enable USB boot to be able to even put it into the boot order. Every BIOS is a bit different. Find the boot section. If it's not in there you need to enable USB boot. Well, it might be called legacy boot within a compatibility mode. Research your manufacturer's website for your specific motherboard. Make sure you save and exit. Yeah, we can change all this later. I'm just gonna leave it. Install. Now, this computer has a Windows 7 key, but I'll tell you a little secret. You can use that key on Windows 10. So what I do is I take a photo of the key because it makes it a lot easier to read. Come on, both fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. Free Windows 10, worth a free computer. Yes, always read these. I'm a speed reader, so I'll read that, no worries. Custom, and we'll delete all the old partitions. Unallocated space, that's what we want. Delete, yes. So now the whole hard drive is blank with a brand new drive. So now we create a new drive and we're just going to do the default size. And it's going to create some extra partitions, like a boot partition, possibly a recovery one. And yes, let it do that. Windows needs those partitions. 
So we want to install on the primary one, which is the largest, the gigabyte one, not the megabyte ones. They are far too small. Cool, and then you're away. Let it install. Even though it might take a while, you should keep an eye on it so that you can rip out that stick drive when it reboots as sometimes it will try and boot back onto the installation media. Okay, so a lot of the time you'd want to set it up for personal use and user email and all of this, but I'm real old school. I just want a normal account. So I'm going to go organization. And I'm going to say join a domain because I don't want to use email. It's just going to slow it down. What if you don't have the internet? It's better to say that you're going to use a domain and then just create an account. I'm just going to call it admin. So it's going to be a domain account. Password? I don't even want a password. But I will make one just because I might end up wanting to use this on my personal network. So networking is a lot easier if you have a password. I'm not sure why it used to work in XP with no password. Okay, privacy settings. So the more of these you have on, it's the more programs running. So I want to turn off as much stuff as I can to try and make this computer as fast as possible. Skip everything. No, we don't want that. It's more programs. Less is more with an old computer. More speed. If you want the most out of it, don't put a lot on it. Okay, the final loading. First thing I'm going to do is just declutter what we can get rid of. Oh, you see how slow that's running? We need to de-bloat this Windows to even be able to get it to work. So we don't want search boxes. No, that can go. We don't want news. Turn off. Task view button, no, we're never gonna use that many things at once on the old girl. Search. We don't want it. We're not gonna use the store. OneDrive, that can definitely go. Settings, we want to try and make it not turn on anymore. Settings. Don't start automatically. Don't show me notifications. No, we don't want any of this stuff. It can go. Close. Close running better already. So what's in here we don't need? All sorts. Spotify? Uninstall. You could automate this with PowerShell too. Disney Plus? Right click. Uninstall. If it can go, get rid of it. Might need the store. Office? That can go. That's just a trial. It's going to end up costing money if you want that. The open start and find the control panel. CON should bring it up. And I'm old school, so I'm gonna change my control panel to small icons, like XP. I just know where everything is. So we want system. Advanced system settings. Here we go. Performance. This is what we want. Performance settings. Yes. Adjust for best performance. We don't care if it doesn't look as pretty, we just want it to run well. And now, we go into Advance, and see our total paging file. Oh, 1048 megabytes, which is not a lot. So what we'll do is instead of automatic, we'll set a custom size, and we'll let it use 15 gigabytes, which is 15,000 megabytes. Initially, and up to 20,000 megabytes, which is 20 gigabytes. So we set that and then go OK. So now it 
has at least 15 gigabytes to 20 gigabytes of hard drive space allocated as a paging file which can be used as RAM. So now and reboot 30 seconds later. Not too bad. And she's working. Oh, it's running much better already. Unbelievable the difference. This is what you call a highly polished turd. And what do you reckon? Should we start rolling it in glitter and look at buying some upgrades for it? I don't know. Leave it in the comments. I think next part we'll just see what games it can already run as is. Cheers for watching all. Please like and subscribe. Take care.